be unto you, Lamb of God. Known are your ways before the foundations of the earth. Demo Sibragahatal Moshinda. Teach us how to pray, Father. Holy Spirit, we invite you this morning once again. Come, teach us how to pray. Show us the burdens of the heart of the Father. Reveal the heart of the Lord to us. Reveal Christ to us from a new position, from a new reality that we may see, that we may walk, that we may understand the desires of the Lord for our day. We position ourselves once again at the gate as we come this morning through your mercy and grace, through your mercy and love, we present our lives to you. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, for this is our reasonable service. Our lamb burning this morning with oil. We glorify you. Come take your place. Show us the desires of our Lord. Reveal to us your passion, your longing. Oh, Dema Koste Baba Yekando. Bradish Daim De Bradimo Zebaboda. It's the day of calibration of our vision and sight. Jesus said, Only the things that I see my Father do. I do. This is our testimony this morning. That our sight is aligned to only that which the Father desired to do even in this season. And so we ask you, teach us. Give us clarity. Give us insight. Give us understanding into your ways. Show us, oh God, the blueprint of your spirit. Help us to understand the sacredness of this new day. Help us to understand the ways of your movement in this new day. Give us, O oh God, yes, Father, the spirit of wisdom, discernment. As you deal with the issues of our heart, we declare this day, O oh God, that yes, our heart is open to receive instruction, direction, correction. So we can pray, so we can advance, Lord, so we can live a life that is in sync with your voice, with your heart, with your will, with your desire and passion and that's why we've enrolled ourselves in the school of prayer and Jesus you are our tutor you are our instructor you are our chief rabbi teach us this morning as John taught his disciple we ask you to teach us how to pray lead us open our eyes open our hearts help us to see help us to understand the intricacies, yes, of an answered prayer. Show us how to transverse this season. Help us to understand that prayer has to do with the openings of the inner eyes. The prayer has to do with the strengthening of the inner man. The prayer has to do with the release, yes, of the spirit of wisdom and counsel. Power. The fear of the Lord. Help us this morning not to pray amiss, but to pray the burdens of your heart. To pray the burdens of your heart. To pray your heart desire. To pray your passion. We want our life to be united with your will and purposes. Yes, you spoke yesterday to us. From Isaiah 11. He said a shoot will come from the stem of Jesse. From his root a branch will bear fruit. He said the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. That's what we are praying for. 
that your spirit will rest on us your spirit will rest on us and you define what your spirit is you define what your spirit means he said the spirit of wisdom and understanding is the forerunner wisdom and understanding is the forerunner so we ask this morning this afternoon this evening this night whatever your time zone is we ask that we be baptized with the spirit of wisdom and understanding it's a need for this hour it's a necessity for this new day that you have ushered us into or else we will we will falter give us wisdom give us wisdom it means to be able to understand the way you want things to be carried out the way you want things to be done the way you want things to be lived out the way you want people to align their life we ask for it this morning give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding help us to understand another word for understanding is sight edo give us edo the ability to know to know how to see things in their true nature in their true ways yes the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel ah uh, counsel and might how we need counsel how we need instruction direction holy spirit you are the very spirit of counsel you are our counselor jesus said i will not leave you yes as often i will not leave you without direction instruction it's what we pray for in this season where all kinds of things are pushing us to make choices that are not in line with your will and purposes give us the spirit of counsel and give us the might to do that which you have revealed to us might and power yes we need the spirit of knowledge and what regulate that knowledge is the fear of the lord what regulate knowledge is the fear of the lord we need the spirit of the fear of the lord yes as we seek knowledge in our day but we need your fear your reverential fear to balance to balance to balance this knowledge and it's from this order oh god that we will not delight that we will delight in your fear and we will not judge by what we see with our eyes or decide what a day a day we can see things with our eyes and decide and call it right a day we can hear things and quickly jump into conclusion spirit of the lord we ask you this morning to grant us insight as we touch on this point we want to look at something the spirit of the lord draw my attention to this morning saints we have to stay away from idols idol is that which you allow us to look at things with our natural eyes and decide and look at things with our natural ear things with our natural ears and decide we have to stay away from worshiping things that sound like that look like god but alas is not and the lord is calling us this morning to look at our life or this evening or whatever time zone we need to look at our life and begin to interact on this reality that we are not yes finding ourselves in a point at the place where we begin to fix our mind on men fix our thoughts yes on things that are fashioned by human mind those are some of the things that i want us to pray ab about and around this morning because these are going to be necessary even as we continue to move into the days ahead of us we have to know how to guard ourselves from idol idol worship 
the worship of self, the worship of time, the worship of what is fashioned by human hand, the worship of man, the worship of human intelligence, human wisdom. We must understand, we need to highlight what the Lord defines as idols in our day. It says, children, stay away from idols. First John 5, 20 and 21. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding. We just spoke about that now. He has come and He's given us, He's given to us understanding. It's key to living life in this end of days. Understanding. To look at things and see those things in their true nature. And see people in their true, yes, nature. That we're not deceived because it's deception that makes people to bow down, yes, to what humans are fashioned with their, with their mind and with their hands. Understanding is a spirit that comes from God. It's not something you get, you understand, yes, in a, in a, in a secular you know, classroom. It's not something you even get by experience. You can have so many experiences. The experience may not really, yes, be in line with what God, yes, has desire or what God has taught you. People, people have all kinds of experience that are not aligned with, you know, the, the will of God, the intentions of God. It took experience to build Babylon. It took skill to build Babylon. It took a dimension, yes, of ingenuity to build the things that men built. So we need, to, we need to begin to understand what the Spirit of God is saying. We have to press into the mind of God, into the heart of God. And we know that the Son of God has come and is given to us understanding so that we may know who is truth. So we may know, friends, I feel a burden this morning. As we interact around this scripture and few others, hopefully we will be able to look into. But I believe this is the time where God is calling us once again to consecrate our heart, consecrate our lives, pro provide for God this morning a clean vessel. A clean vessel is a vessel, yes, that is void of every form of idol. Idols of thoughts. Idols of imagination idols of desire idols yes that have crept into our life things that are stealing our time and our life away from the place that God wants us to be things that are that have become you understand issues fighting yes the instructions the ways of God idols that have that are blocking our view from seeing God Seeing Christ in his true nature, in his true way, in his true desire, in his true intention. Idols that are forcing us to build things that are contrary to the desires of the Lord. Come on. We have to believe the Lord that we are purged. We are purged. We are purged, purged from every form of idol. Idolatry is a, is a, is a, is a scene, a major scene before the Lord. You will have no other God beside me, he said to the children of Israel. You will have no other gods. We need to clarify and define what are the gods today that are seeking the place of Yahweh in our life, that are seeking to push the Lord away. You know, God said to Ezekiel, he said, come and see what the, these people are doing. They are pushing me out of my temple. They are pushing me out of my house. They've brought in all kinds of gods while they are pretending to the people. When you, when, you, when you enter those places, when you look at those people, you will think they are worshipping God. God had to take Ezekiel to the back room, to the, to the back door. They had to break the wall. They say, come see what these people are doing. I know it's not what is visible to the naked eyes. You have to look deep. You have to go deep. If the Lord never took Ezekiel deep into what is going, yes, on in the chamber, in the room, Ezekiel would not, would not have known. He would have just thought, oh, this is what they are, just worshippers of God. No, 
right in the in the house of God. They were worshiping Tammuz. They were worshiping all kinds of things. Baal. They were worshiping. You understand the God of Sun, the Queen of Heaven. They were worshiping all kinds of things in the house of God. They were not doing it outside. That was how brazen these people have become. This is how terrible, yes, that generation had become. And this is what we are seeing in our day. And that's why many people will be deceived. The Bible says the days were not cut short. Even the elect will be deceived because you would have interfaced with people and things that you think love God. But right beneath them, they've opened themselves to strange spirits. They've opened themselves to the sons of Belia. They are, they are in love with the queen of heaven. Idols. We have to in this new day. As the spirit of God awakens us. We have to pray God. Rid me of every idol. Rid me of that thing that is stopping me from worshipping you. In spirit and in truth. Rid me of everything in my life. In my mind, in my thoughts, it starts from beneath, within you. It's not until you carve out things. Back in the day, they carved things out. Today, we are carving things in our minds, in our thoughts. We are shaping things. We, create, we are using our imagination to form all kinds of things. Do you know that, you know, lust is an idol? I discovered that years back. And as the Lord began to deal with me in this area, I realized that this is an idol. You're worshiping something. Whatever you set your mind on that is not on God is an idol. Anything that you focus on, that, you, that takes your time, you understand? Yes, that is not bringing glory to God is an idol. If we can teach our generation that yes, the worship focus on man, seeing man, is an idol the men of God some men of God have become idols some parents have become idols some children have become idols oh and this is this is difficult but it, this is the truth our leaders are becoming idols nations are becoming idols where we 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 elevate you know certain nations certain environment we think they have what it takes. We think they are, our solution comes from there. Politicians have become idols. We think ah, they are going to do it. They promise. No. You've got to see what the Lord is saying. We have to highlight this point so that we can continue to live within the narrowness, within the tightness of the demand of God for our day. We don't want to miss, amen, the speakings of God. We don't want to shun ourselves and shut us ourselves away from the voice of God. We want to read our life of idol worship. Let's not kid ourselves and say, but me, I don't worship any. I, I mean, I worship God. What do you do with your time? What kind of friends do you keep? What's the structure? What's the wine skin of what you do? Is it the one who defines it? What is that thing that is paramount in your heart, in your life? What is that thing competing, yes, as an ambition with the, with the vision of God in your life? What is, what is that thing that you're pursuing, that you have tagged a vision, that you know is in fact an ambition? That's an idol. What is that scripture that you have lifted of the Bible? That you build all kinds of things around. But you will not listen to other things that ought to guard and balance what you claim to know. What you claim you are promoting. It's an idol. When we choose things to promote certain beliefs, ideas and values in the name of God. That does not speak to, yes, the other aspects of God's truth in our life. That's an idol. We can continue and continue. What is that thing that you are seeking to build to prove that you are somebody? But you would not listen to what God is saying to you, to what God is correcting in your life. 
just because you live in an environment where competition has become the order of the day you also have joined them because you must do something you just must do something to prove that you're not backwards it's an idol little children keep yourself from idols I must keep myself can you see nobody's gonna do that for you let me finish that scripture because we're tracking something as we pray and we ask the Lord this morning to to help us or this afternoon wherever times are I'm praying that the Lord God Almighty will help the church the body of Christ globally that we will begin to ask the Lord to you see you have to be able to see what's an idol if you don't see it you won't even know that you're already pouring libation to all kinds of spirit first John 5 20 and we know that the Son of God has come and he has given to us understanding so that we may know who is true you know why John wrote this thing because at that period in time in that season in time there are all kinds of people coming claiming that what they say what they preach what they teach is the truth Gnosticism was very rife in the time of, you know, the early church. There were all kinds of people claiming just after Jesus, you know, left the earth. There were all kinds of people coming, bringing all foreign spirits and bringing all foreign teachings and bringing all kinds of foreign doctrines and trying to malign and trying to lure and trying to pull away the believers. So they were attacking the church with all kinds of teachings, all kinds of wrong doctrine, just as we see today. Have you seen that there are so many souls, innocent souls, that have been swept away because of wrong teaching, because of wrong emphasis. Wrong teaching is wrong emphasis. It doesn't mean the things they are saying is not true, but it's not the truth. When you take a truth that is not speaking to the truth, ah, that's iniquity. It is, it is the highest level of wickedness to take part of a truth and build a whole mountain around it and call it the truth. That's what we are seeing. People have built, they've built, you know, lies. They've built monuments. They've built castles. They've built massive things on a strand of truth. When you put that truth on the scale of other truth, it can't stand. That's what we are seeing today. That's an idol. That's idolatry. That's building another God. That's shaping another God with a truth that is, that is connected to lies. You use the truth as a front to promote a lie. It's an idol. Oh, Jesus. The Lord must help us. You want to get rich by force. So you take strands of truth. That's why we sit today in the body of Christ. You take a strand of truth. You take pockets of truth. And you build. You build all kinds of things around it. The truth does not negate other truth. The truth of God is an ecosystem. They are all interconnected. One truth does not negate another truth. We need to watch our hearts. We need to watch our ways, our life. We need to guard ourselves in this season. I know that I'm speaking to a remnant. And hopefully the remnant will, will go out there and speak. And their voice will become louder so that others can hear. You have to learn how to persuade others with truth. There was a guy, I can't, I can't remember his name now. He was one of the major campaigners for Donald Trump among the youth. This guy is sound. Not just sound, you understand, you know, from an intellectual level, but he knows the word of God. 
and this guy is 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 daring and is brazen i mean he went to university and begin to challenge you know all these youths who have been taught all kinds of wrong things i tell you i do believe 80 percent of the victory of donald trump came from that guy because if donald trump had lost the youth there's no way he could have won this guy was i mean i will look for his name I mean, he had a whole set of teams. These guys were sharp. And when I looked at that, I said, this is, the, this is what we need as the church. This, these are the kind of people who know what's going on. They know the lies the enemy is pumping to the people, but they also know the truth. And they, I mean, he would just come, he would give the people open mic, speak. What, what do you have against? What is the problem? You tell us. And I'll tell you my own stand. Then let's make a choice. And everybody's standing listening. I mean, it's a day of reasoning. What do you know? If you don't know the truth, there's no way you can win the argument in this last day. What we have is men who know half truth. And they've built all kinds of lies. This guy will let the people, you know, come and explain themselves. Talk about what you believe. Talk about your own ideology, your own philosophy. Then he tells you, I'm not just saying this because I'm a Christian, but even from a logical point, this is what is right. What do you think? And by the time he 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 argues and you know and and put his point out, then everybody goes quiet. Then they clap for him. He just wants somebody. We need a different kind of church in this end time. A church that is not backwards. A church that has sat with the word of God. That is not just looking for cheap victory. No. If we're going to have victory in this last day, it's not going to be a cheap victory. We have to go back to the word of God and understand. Look at what the scripture says. We know that the son of God has come and he has given to us understanding. He didn't just come and give us Bible. He came to give us understanding. Understanding means that you know what is behind. You understand what is behind the curtain. So when they ask you to read what is on the wall, you can read it. That's understanding. And that's what we need in this season. As we engage this third day. As we engage, yes, this third day. We need the spirit of understanding. So where you see something, you know the spirit behind it. You need understanding to discern the spirit behind events. Behind the times and the season. Behind people. Behind activity. Behind events. There are events that will be put up massive in the name of the Lord. You need understanding to know what is behind. What is the agenda? Or else you will be deceived. I will be deceived. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to be deceived behind policies. We don't want to be deceived behind politicians. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want deception that are behind, you know, what will look nice and look good on the outside. Have you noticed that when the devil wants to, wants to come for you, he doesn't come with two hands. He doesn't come and say, well, you know, I'm the devil and I'm here to destroy you. No. It comes through faces, through things that you love, that you like. That you will hardly, you know, want to reject. And this is why they are talking about, amen, we need understanding. Another word for understanding is discernment. It's a spirit. And we need to believe God. We need to ask the Lord to give to us in this season, in this period in time, understanding. We know that the Son of God has come and is given to us understanding. So that we may know who is true. And we are in him who is truth. <laughs> we are in him who is true. This thing is coming from a place of relationship, oneness with Christ. Who is true? He is, amen, the son Jesus Christ. You can see that this was an argument that is being made by John the Elder. We know that we are in him. Jesus 
Jesus who is Christ. Who is Christ? He is the truth. This is contending for the truth here. Just as, amen, the believers living in this 21st century, living in this end of days, living today, the 15th day, you understand, of the month of November 2024, we need to contend not just for the faith, we need to contend for truth. Because if you don't contend for truth, we will fall into the spirit, amen, of idol, idol worship, idolatry. You think that when we say idol, you think of, you know, those days where, you know, grandparents used to pour libation to some spirit. They still do all of that. But now this spirit today, the spirit of idolatry, have, have, have metamorphosed, they have changed. People who want to lead us into idol worship today are people in suit. There are people who have, you know, very silk life, very polished life. There are not people back in the days that you look and you say, this guy was not at the bath for, you know, 20 days. We're just sitting somewhere in the bush. No, these are, these are corporate people. These are people you want to be with, you want to talk to, you want to interact with them. When you listen to them, when they talk, if you are not, in, if you are not knowledgeable in the word of God, they will floor you. Because these are people who have been taught by humanism. Their, 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 their philosophy of life is you know, self-elevation, is man's worship. Is what you can do for yourself, what you can be all by yourself, how you can achieve things, how you can become all that God wants you to be. That's how they will talk. You can be all that they will use God. You can be all that God wants you to be. But by the time they finish, you would have promoted you, project you. They would have blown you up. At the end of the day, you are larger than life. I'll say it again. I will never, never say anything that will stop or hinder you from prospering in life. But there's a way and there's a pattern to which God wants you to prosper. He himself says, for I know the plans that I have for you. He's got a, he's got a divine DNA plan for your success. A plan that nobody can frustrate, that can truncate, no devil can truncate it. But when you move out of the plans of God and you begin to, yes, give yourself into the entrap entrapment of humanism, human philosophy, that's idol. They will make you an idol. That was what Rome made the people back in the day. Rome made the people idol worshippers. Individual were worship to the point that Caesar saw himself, you understand, the first Caesar saw himself as a god you know pharaoh saw himself as a god you know nebuchadnezzar saw himself as a god when god sent moses back to pharaoh what did pharaoh say who is that god <laughs> what give a man such audacity to think he could challenge the god of heaven he said who is that god why because he was also worshiping certain gods of heaven His life had been interfaced with deity. <laughs> there are men today that are almost being deified. And this is why I keep saying to my friends and brothers in America, do not make the mistake to think Donald Trump is your Messiah. And I know some people say, oh, Isaiah, you're just being paranoid. We know, we know that God, God is just using. There are people that God used, that people know that God sent them. At some point, they took their eyes off God and begin to look at those people. So this is a warning. This is a caution. We need not to fall into the trap of the old, except we're not reading history. You want that man to finish his work the way God ordained him. Pray for him. But don't put your hope and trust in him. Pray for him. Just as we would do for every other leader. 
Just as we do for the, you know, for the new president of, of, of Botswana. We will pray. We will say, oh, he's a believer. Yes, he's a believer. But we need to pray for them. So that they themselves can keep their eyes on the Lord. Donald Trump needs to keep his own eyes on the Lord. Not on his own ability. Not on Elon Musk and the rest of those people that he has surrounded himself with. Which are very good in terms of what they need to do. But hey, it will be the greatest mistake America will make to keep their hope and trust in the arm of flesh. And I'll show you. Because I'm speaking as a prophetic voice. And this is why God is waking me up so early these days. That we need to push this thing. We need to open the eyes of the people. We need, we need God to remove, yes, the religious, you know, you know, spirit. The scale must fall of our eyes. If you love that man, you love what God is doing in his life, you stand for him, you pray for him. But you don't look at him as the Messiah, as a, some savior. He's not a savior. If anyone thinks that because he's dead, they can, they can just then now live their Christian life the way they want to live their heart, it will be the biggest mistake. I've been saying it for the past three days. It will be the biggest mistake you're going to make. If there's ever a time the church needs to go into warfare, is today, is now. If ever a time we need our sight to be calibrated, we need to have clarity into the heart of God. We need to have a burden, not just for America, but for the nations. Because listen, all that is happening today, we have to sit within the context of the end of days, of the last day. Yes, upon us, the culminations of the end of the age have come upon the activity shaping, you understand, global affairs in this season are very prophetic. They are very prophetic. So you cannot look at them and think, oh, well, you know, this is politics. There's nothing politics now. Things that are happening right now are for, you understand, yes, the redemption of humanity. The things that are happening globally right now, anything happening right now in the world, you understand, has been elevated to a prophetic activity. And that should change the way, you understand, we, we look at things. Government, where we look at government today, we should look at them as agents. Agents that can either advance the purpose of God or agents that can, you know, foster the plans of the, of the man of sin. We, we have to see it from those two eyes. Policies that are being formed and being shaped in different corners of the earth, yes, are moving. Anything that is happening right now on the level of you know governance, on the level of economy, on the level of human, human, you know, human dignity, whatever it is, we have to see it as part of what you understand is being used to advance certain prophetic activity on the earth. So how you look at politics today has to change. How you look at economy, how you look at the world of finance, business has to change. How you do church in this season has to change. Your wine skin, I've been saying it. If you're still carrying, carrying on doing church the way you used to do it 10, 20 years ago, it means you're blind. You are not understanding. You're not realizing where we are. They said, do you know today, Elijah, 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 do you know today God is going to take your master from you? Do you have an understanding of the season that you live in? Imagine if El Elijah didn't know. <laughs> Imagine if Elijah was not aware. How aware are you of the times how aware of, are you of the season? And I'm saying that so that, amen, we don't join, yes, the lies, the deception that is out there being promoted in the name of the Lord. Go and read the scripture again that we are flashing. First John 20, 21. And we know that the Son of God has come and he's come to give us understanding. You need it. It's an anchor. If you're going to live successfully if you're going to break through this season when you see things when you hear things you want to ask the lord what are you saying what are you showing what is this what does this thing mean understanding the word understanding comes from the word edo is a sight is a prophetic sight 
do you truly have the understanding of things? If you do, your relationship will change. Your friendship will change. Your interactions will change. Because that's what understanding is designed for. Is to help us to make the right choice. Yes. When you don't have understanding, you will make the wrong choice. You will invest in the wrong thing. You will do the wrong thing. You will connect with the wrong people. And you will think that you are actually, you understand, on the right path. Understanding is sight. is spiritual sight. When Paul speaks about that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, they're talking about understanding. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. You need it. I need it. We all need it to live life in this season. To advance the intentions of God. To move within the order of the spirit. Hallelujah. In this season. Every day I pray for this spirit. Give me Lord understanding. Help me to walk in a clearer yes, position of the revelation of your son Jesus. I want to know. I want to see things in their true light. And there's a reason why they are talking about that. You see, you see the things that uh, you know, uh, Brother John is talking about. And then in 21, look at what he said. We know that the Son of God has come to give us understanding so that we may know who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, he is the, tr he's, he's the true. He's the true God and eternal life. Then 21 says, little children. He saw those, you know, young believers he saw them as children remember he was speaking to three categories of people he was speaking to children he was speaking to young men he was speaking to elders he said little children keep yourself from idols you know children one of the nature of children is that they can't discern easily they can't discern it's easy for a child uh, you know to be given things and you can win children with things you can just win them over children just show them some love show them you know even if you don't really love them but just show them you care you know just buy them things give them things you understand yes take them out take them to you know to eat hamburger you know take them to mcdonald's just take them you know they will love you that's how innocent children are you can easily win them over that's the point children are easily won over and that's how we know the level of Christianity, spirituality that, you know, is being practiced today. Many are still in that level of children. And that's why this, this you know, charlatans will come and do all kinds of magic and do all kinds of crazy things. And then the place is filled up. You understand? They take up, they, they abuse the, they abuse the children. People go to church, imagine people, you know, Prostrate before a man of God. Imagine a man of God walking on people. All in the name of Christianity. Back in the days, a few years ago, we saw the one feeding the people with, with grass to eat. Feeding them with petroleum to drink. Say so when they drink it, you know, it, it will become a juice in their mouth. We've seen all kinds of crazy things that have been done. We, we look at the things happening all over the world. It just tells you that Christianity is still, in, is still in its infant state. I'm sorry to say, but that is the truth. We've raised, you know, a generation of children. And this is why he said in Galatians 4, when, we are, when you're supposed to become, you know, you know, a leader, you're supposed to move to the point and place of leadership. You're still children, so you're not better than, you understand, one that is under tutors. I can commit spiritual things. In, in, in Hebrews, Paul was speaking again about that. He said, when you ought to be teaching, you still need people to teach you the elementary aspects of the things of God. You don't need meat, you need milk. But you know that the nature of the days that we, we live in, we need meat. And that's why we have to change the wine skin of what we're doing. That's why we have to change the pattern of how we do church. We have to focus more on discipleship. We have to focus more on training. I know there are a few men of God that listen to me. They, they think I don't know, but I know. 
Because they sneak in and they sneak out. And I'm saying this now. Continue to say this thing as a prophetic voice. You need to change, yes, the diet that you feed the people. Stop entertaining the people. Build them to become, yes, army for God. And if you're going to a place where all they're doing is just to entertain you, I, you are permitted to leave that place and go look for where. If you can't find, stay in your house and learn the ways of the kingdom. Let anybody deceive you. Listen to this. When you came to this world, you came alone. When you're going to leave this world, you're going to live alone. So don't let anybody tell you, you can't do without me. You can do without them. Go let the Lord build you. When they build you, let them send you back. That's the principle in the scripture. Whenever God wants to use somebody, he isolates them. He takes them away from the people, from the crowd. Many of you say you go to church, but you're lost in the crowd. Because not even the man of God knows you. You are lost in the crowd. You've heard me say several times, there's a reason why God put me online. I didn't wake up. People, people who know me, who know me, they've not been in ministry for close to 33 years. I'm not a baby. I'm not a child. I didn't just wake up one day, decide to do what I'm doing. I pastor for 20 years. I pastor a church. I mean, various phases and seasons of my, of my journey with God. When I came to South Africa, we started the fellowship at House Church. Now God says be online because there is a company of people the Lord wants to reach and he cannot reach them without this kind of platform. So you can't expect me to be talking the same thing that they are talking in, the, in their local church. I don't do that. I see the urgency of what God amen, is demanding and requiring of the body of Christ, of the church of the Lord in this period in time. And we need to be careful of idol, idol worship. Worship men. Don't worship yourself. Don't worship your job. Don't worship your career. Don't worship your money. Don't worship poverty. Don't worship your children. Don't worship your marriage. Don't worship your husband. Don't worship, you understand, your wife. Don't worship your parents. Love them. Serve them. You understand? But you must only have one God. And him alone you must worship. Him alone you must worship. Him alone you must worship. What's the next word? Psalm 140. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. This is a Psalm of David. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as I live. This is David speaking. Do not put your trust in princes. There's a prince that is talking here. I hope you know that David was a prince. He became a king. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. May God continue to use us to steer the scriptures. I also was steered by the scripture. It's not like I go around looking for them. No. You wake up and the scriptures start ringing in your ears. And God said, this is how we begin the day. That's how I track with God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praising the Lord is a state of mind. It's not just the expression of melody. To praise God is a condition of your heart, your life. It's everything in you giving glory and honor to God. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I, I always say this, when your soul begins to praise God in the right way, ah, friend, you're good to go. Because that's where the battle is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. 
Would you make such a de de declaration? I will praise the Lord all my life. It's a declaration. It's a proclamation. It's a confession. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to God as long as I live. Then in verse 3, it's not, it's not talking about the message. Do not put your do not put your trust in princes. In human beings. <laughs> it's like, hey, wait a minute. Let me remind you. There are humans and there's a God. Do not put your trust in human beings. Do not put your trust in princes. You know, princes are very powerful people. They have wealth. They have wealth. They have influence. They have power. <clears throat> That's why they are called princes. He said, but they are just humans. Who cannot save? That's one thing princes cannot do. They cannot save. They can fight for their nation. They can do all kinds of things. But they cannot save. And that must be clear to us in this period in time. That our redemption, our salvation comes from one person and one alone. His name is Jesus Christ. Do not put your trust in princes, in humans who cannot save. Listen to verse 4. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plan come to an end. <laughs> oh, Jesus. On the very day they die, their plans come to an end. Meaning that princes have got plans. Our leaders have got plans. Our presidents have got plans. You understand? Yes. Our governors have got plans. Our fathers have got plans. You know, our community leaders have got plans. Our pastors, apostles, you know, amen. Our bishops, they all got plans. But they are but humans. They may be princes. Many of our leaders in the church have elevated themselves to the position of prince. They are prince. In fact, some of them are called prince now. They are kings. They live like kings. Some of us in our brain, we have been taught to think like prince. Yes, if you're going to make it in life, if you've got to break through in life, you have to think like a king. You have to walk like a all that is good, but remember you are just but a human being. You're just but a breath. This thing calls for soberness. Our message calls for soberness. Sobriety is the key to live and succeed in the end of days. He said, when you are rich, don't put your trust in the wealth. That's a wealthy man that is talking. A wealthy man that is talking. This is a wealthy man. David was a wealthy king. He says, do not put your trust in princes, in humans who cannot save. We need to look at this. When their spirit departs, meaning that when they die, they return to the ground. Yes. Flesh to flesh. On that very day, their plans come to nothing, come to an end. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jeshurun. <laughs> I like that translation. The God of Jeshurun. The God of Jacob. Whose hope is in the love of their God. What's the word this morning? Keep yourself from idols. That's the word. Keep yourself from idols. Idol worship. Keep yourself from self-elevation. And keep yourself from those who have elevated themselves. Pride goes before a fall. You know, it's pride 
to move away from the ways of God, from the pattern of God, and begin to look to something else is pride. And we have to read our life from these things. Let's look at one more scripture. Oh, Ephraim, Hosea 4, verse 1. Now, no, this is verse 8, actually. Oh, Ephraim, what have I to do anymore with idols? Oh, Ephraim, Ephraim, of course, we know that Ephraim is another way of calling Israel. What have I to do anymore with idols? Is it not I who answer and watch over you? This is God like talking. Am I not the one who watch over you, save you, O oh Ephraim? I'm like a flourishing, flourishing cypress. Your fruit comes from me. Not from Baal. Whoever is wise, let him understand. Do you see that word again? Whoever among you that is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, in case you don't understand that, <laughs> understanding is discernment. They just confirmed it. Whoever, all right, who is wise, let him understand this thing. Whoever is discerning, let them know. Can you see the word understand? Can you see the word discern? Can you see the word know? Let them know. For the ways of the Lord arise and the righteous walk in them. But the rebellious stumble in them. What I'm saying, if your heart is not in alignment with the truth, you'll be stumbling on this truth. You'll be stumbling on this word. You will think this guy is just a babbler, just making noise. I'm not making noise. That is the same Bible you are reading. It's in the same Bible you have. Go read it. Let the word correct you. Let the word adjust you. We live in days of idolatry. In the last day, knowledge will increase. You know what that means? People will put their trust more in their mind, in their own idea, in their own way, in their own thinking, in their own philosophy, in their own ideology. We are in this world, but the Bible says we are not of this world. You know what that means? We are not supposed to be yielding, to be giving over to the ways of this world. We need to be reminding ourselves constantly, continually who we are, where we come from, where we are going, what we represent here on earth. This is a marketplace. We are here to bring people, to convince people to truth, to the ways of Christ. We're not here to be assimilated. We're not here to blend in. Come on. I say we're not here to blend in. You are not here to blend in. If you find yourself already blending into the system, you are captured. And I ask you, in what way are you blending into the system? When you start thinking the way the world is thinking, when you start using the ways of the world, yes, to reason, to act, You've blended in. They've captured you. You've been assimilated. You're eating from the table of Nebuchadnezzar. You now bear the name that Nebuchadnezzar gave you. You are now wearing the garment, yes, of Nebuchadnezzar. That thing brought destruction to Achan and his entire clan. He said, I saw the Babylonish garment. I took it. I coveted it. I took it. I went to eat it under my tent. He, that thing brought destruction, not just to his life, but to his entire family. Come on. We have to understand what God is saying to us in this season. Stay away from idol, I, idolatry. Stay away from idol. Anything that wants you to bow the knees, that wants you to bow your mind, to worship any system, any religion, any ideology that seek to elevate anything rather than God, the God of heaven, the God that his name is Yahweh. You understand? The one who rules, who created you. Anything could be an idea. You cast down that thing. They say casting down every imagination and every lofty thing, every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. 
cast it down, bring it down. Don't trade your life. Don't trade your destiny for temporal things. Why do people worship idol? Why do pe- because people want to survive. They think that's, that's the best way to get money. They think that's the best way to get known. They think that's the best way to get powerful. Yes, why do people worship idol? Because they're looking for power. Why are they looking for power? Because they're insecure. It's insecurity that makes us to live the ways of God and choose an alternative. It is insecurity. It is rejection that makes us to think that God is too late. The ways of God are too hard. I can't wait for God. I need to be there quick and fast. I need to get my own, you know, my own thing. I need to have my... Why? Because you want to prove a point to people. Because you want to show people. Because you want to declare to others that you're not a failure. I want you to scrutinize your own heart. Check your motive. Stay away from idols. Oh, Ephraim, what have I to do anymore with idols? What are you doing with idols? What are the idols of today? And these things are gradually building. Let me put it in the context of, you understand, this new day that we're living. Don't put your trust in artificial intelligence. As much as they are good, you can use them. I use them sometimes. But guess what? Every now and then the Lord tells me, these are, these are things that have been fashioned by the hands of men. The good. Of course, there are things fashioned by human hand that we use. After all, the house that you're living were built by human hand. But don't put your trust. Don't put your hope. And the plan is they're pushing these things, you understand, to creation, to humanity, so that you live a life where you think you can do without them. When you begin to realize that you're doing something or you are depending on something that you cannot do without, that thing is becoming an idol. That's why you as a pastor, as a leader, do not preach a message that makes the people depend on you. You are creating idol of yourself. You're making idol of yourself. When you, when you create an environment where people think they cannot do without you, you have taken the place of God in the life of the people. When a society, a nation, creates an economy that makes the people depend on them to the point that the people think they cannot do without that, you know, that scheme, that system, that is idol. That's idol. And that's what we've seen created in Europe. And that's why many Europeans that are waking up, that they, they have actually been controlled. They've been under a system. They've been under a spell. We're breaking that hold over Europe. That the God has become, you understand, you know, uh, uh, you know the system has become the, their God. We're breaking that hold. In America, we're breaking that hold. Thank God for, 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 you know, for President Donald Trump. But we say, America, do not put, if you put your hope on Donald Trump, that will be the end. The best you can do is to pray for him. Is to keep aligning his heart and his team to the will of God. But you look unto him. We just read the scripture. Well, I'm reading scripture here. And if you like, don't listen. But the day will come. You will see. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I told you. God gave us this man for this season. It's not just for America alone. This, this is almost like another time of reset, reset globally, just like we had, you know, I remember 2020 where we had a reset. This is like also a kind of a reset globally. I hope you understand that the impact of Donald Trump winning the election is going to, I was thinking about that this morning. I was even thinking of how that impacts, you know, the platform of social media like Google. 
Do you, do you know the kind of victory that this gives to us? That that man won? I mean, there are things you cannot say at some point. There are things you cannot do. They remove your, they just remove your whatever. They, they don't even ask you twice. But now they know who is there. They know the boss is back. <laughs> they know the boss is back. And not only is he back, he's back, you know, with the bang. He's come with, you know, some, you don't want to mess up with those guys that he's, that, you know. But even with all of that, we're saying, don't put your trust in the arm of flesh. You get the point that I'm making? Because it's so easy to put our trust in the most strongest man. Because that's what we're looking for. Who wants to look for a weak man as a leader? <laughs> Who wants to look for a weak person as a leader? Nobody. Have you ever seen a woman wants to marry a weak person? No. You want to marry a strong person. Whatever that strength is. You want somebody who's got strength, who's got, yes, uh -huh. who can protect you, who can defend you. That's what we want. When you're looking for a house, you don't want to find a house where there's no security. You want somebody, and that's why you want. It won't based on all of the things that people want. They want, you know, their border to be secure. Yeah, just like South Africans say, we want our border to be secure. I support, you understand, a, a secure border. You can't have a nation and your borders are not secure. <laughs> you want everything about your life secure. Nobody wants to live their, their, you know, you know, in an environment, in an area where they know that things are not going to, you know, anybody can come in and just do whatever. No, you, you, you've invested. You don't want to die. You want security. Where they say, except the Lord watches over the city. That's the point. You see, we've got to balance truth. Except the Lord watches over the city. You can have amen, all kinds of fences built over your house to the point that you yourself have become a prisoner in your own house. You get the point that I'm making? Just like most houses in Nigeria. I mean, those people, are, they are living like prisoners. If you go to Nigeria, you, see, you won't even see the house. What you'll be seeing is walls. They spend money building walls than building the house. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't want to be cynical, but that's just the truth. Except the Lord. Watches over the city, except the Lord builds the house, the builder building, but in vain. Except the Lord watches the city, the watchmen, no matter how secure they are, no matter how you know, how, how you know, how you know, cautious, how you know, protective they are, They're watching, but in vain. You can have the best security if the Lord is not the one watching, and for the Lord to watch. The heart of a people must be connecting to God. That's the point that I'm making. Thank God for Donald Trump. But Lord, we thank you. Our hope is in you. Our eyes are on you. Thank God for what you're doing this season. We look up to you. They look up to him. They were not ashamed. Their countenance were changed. Father, we honor your name. You see the word? I'll finish with this scripture again. Psalm 1, 146, verse 1. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh my soul, I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, when they are dead, they return to the ground. On that very day, that's the context. On that very day, their plans come to nothing, comes to an end. Their plans, except the Lord, you understand? Yes, plan the thing, except the Lord establishes the plan. Your plan is but in vain. Lord, we honor you. We turn to you this day, oh God, as you speak to us about these things. Once again, our heart is shifted. Our minds are shifted. Our thoughts are shifted. We come to the place of trust. We trust in you. 
We trust in you. I put my trust in you. When we trust in you, then wherever you lead us is where we want to go. Wherever you are is where we want to be. When our trust is in you, we have no fear. When David put his trust in you, he was not afraid of Goliath. In the natural, David was no match for Goliath. But if people could just see, if the rest of the army could just see who was backing David, his, his strength was coming from a different order, from a different realm that they were not aware of. And that's what makes us different, friends. That's the difference between, you know, Christ Christianity and other religion and other belief system. It is who backs us. It is who is behind us. Not what. It is who. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not afraid. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. This day, Father, we declare that we turn to you. You say, turn to me and be saved. We turn to you this morning. We declare, Lord, you are the one building this house. Every house is built by a man. Every nation is built by a man. As Donald Trump seeks to rebuild America, we declare this day that that's a good thing. But Lord, accept you build yourself. Accept he allows you to build through him. Accept the team allow you to build through them. Just like every other nation. Accept you build. And when you build, you build through men who have availed themselves. And that's what we are asking for, Lord. That this nation will see this moment as sacred, as sacred season to offer themselves to you. To you, oh God. Build us. Build. Build the nation. Build your church. Rebuild your church again. Pull down everything that we have built in the name of idols. Pull down, bring down, oh God, yes, the loftiness of men, the high looks, the pride, the ungodliness that we have allowed, yes, to be elevated even within your house. It's time for those things to come down. As you give us this window of opportunity for a reset, for a reorder, <laughs> Father, we pray, oh God, may that which your name, oh God, is and represents become what manifests in our time, in our life. This is our prayer. This is our desire, oh God. That you will, oh God, move like never before. That your name, your glory will become manifest in our day, in our time. Spirit of the Lord, we ask you to steer our heart. Steer our heart. Steer the heart of your people. Awaken us to the place of truth again. Awaken us to the altar of truth and righteousness. Let there be a company of men and women who will begin to get rid of everything that is called idol. On that day where Simeon got saved, said he brought out all the books all the ma books of magic and all those things that he was using to do all kinds of things that people thought he was some some you know some great one they thought he was the voice of god but when he collided hallelujah with philip when he collided with the apostolic grace of god the land changed he brought out all his books all his magic charms Burnt. That's what we ask for in this season. That everything that is not of you, that is not, yes, in line with your ways and will, that people have thought is the right pattern. We declare this day as we address and engage the simians of the land, that those things will become burnt in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, one of the things you said to the people of Israel as they left Egypt is, Thou shalt worship no other God. Lord, in this new day, we declare everything that men have turned to, that have become, yes, Lord, a pattern of worship, that in fact is from the covens of darkness. We say judgment to those things. Give us sight. Give us sight. Give us sight. Give us sight. Give us the spirit, oh God, of Philip. The belief Philip went, yes, he engaged the, the spirit of Simeon, the sorcerer. Yes, we declare this day that every form of sorcery, every form of idolatry, every form of witchcraft, every form of wickedness, perversion, deception. We say the truth has come. Wisdom has come. Understanding has come. Light has come. Let every house 
be built according to heaven's pattern in this thing. Let every house be built according to heaven's divine pattern in this new day. In the name of Jesus, we rise up. We take our place. We bring forth in the name of Jesus, the way of the Lord. We declare right now, look at the foundation of many generations and what men have built. Father, shake everything that can be shaken. That the things that cannot be shaken may abide. For we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Shake, O God, from the core. Shake from the foundation. Shake the pillars, O God. Shake the walls, O God. In the name of Jesus, this is your day. This is your time. This is your hour. Come, Jesus. We invite you into our nation. We invite you into our community. We invite you into our society. We declare this day. We invite you into our homes, into our family. Lord, is there anything that is not of you? When they were to depart from the house of Laban, Jacob said, get rid of your idols. Ah, uh -uh, but Rachel will not listen. Get rid of any accosting because this guy, he had come to an understanding that you cannot journey with God and you've got idols. And she took one of our house, one of our father's household gods. She took it. And that, you understand, actually made her to go barren. You don't deal with idolatry and not be barren. You don't take things that is of this world and, and, you, and suddenly think you're going to prosper. It may look as if you're prospering, but the devil, you understand, is a master planner. He will, he will make sure that everything is looking nice on the outside. But guess what? God has already shut your womb. It's time to get rid of idols. It's time to get rid of perversion. Get rid of lie. You will live in lie. You will live in deception. Get rid of it. You will live, oh God, yes, in a lifestyle that is contrary to the will of God. Get rid of it. It will shut your womb. You know what that means? It will shut whatever it is that God wants to use you for. Whatever it is that you believe you have been assigned to do. Idolatry has a way of blocking your prosperity, blocking your advancement, blocking the advancement of the, of the counsels of God in your life. So get rid of it. She took it. When the, when the father came pursuing Jacob, looking for one of his household gods, she sat on it. She thought she was being smart. She didn't know that she was actually shooting herself by the foot. That's the type of a church. God help us. God help us in this season. You don't want to touch their cost things. You don't want to play. You don't want to mess with things that God says he doesn't want. Don't you know that your life, your body is the temple of the living God, he said. Don't you know your body is the temple? How do you mix? How do you mix the ark of God with Dagon? When they, when they seized the ark of God, they captured the ark of God. They took it to the temple of Dagon. By the next day, you know what happened? The God was broken in pieces. You can't bring cold and hot and mix them together. That's why God said he hates lukewarmness. He hates lukewarmness. He hates things that are of this world. You can't use them to try to, you understand, define the things of the spirit. Don't put your trust in the arm of flesh. Let's not put our hope in the arm of flesh. The flesh will fail us. The flesh will fail us. Man will fail us. Foolish are they who put their trust in the arm of flesh. Lord, we turn to you in this season. We ask you to help us, heal us, reform us. Help us to turn. Help us to turn to you. Help us to get rid of everything and anything in our life contrary to your divine pattern, contrary to your divine order, contrary to the system and the protocols of heaven. No matter how nice they are, no matter how wonderful they may seem and look, we get rid of them. 
that's the spirit of worship if you're a worshiper of God you want to get rid of anything that can stop you that can hinder you from living a life of true worship you want to get rid of them you know why oftentimes our worship are not accepted before the Lord there are too many distractions there are too many distractions around there are too many distractions around you want to get rid of the distraction you want to prepare the ground you want to prepare the ground if you're coming to me with the Lord you don't want to go assuming you don't want to go presuming you want to be sure that everything is done is ready and prepared you want him to come down you want him to come down on that fire you want to see his presence you want to see his glory you've got to rebuild the altar based on the divine pattern you have to rebuild your life based on the divine order and system father we turn to you we turn to you in this season we turn to you in this hour teach us how to live a life that honor you teach us how to live a life that praises you teach us how to live a life that praises you that glorifies you this is our prayer Lord teach us how to pray as a nation whatever it is in our life that's not in alignment with your will this is the time we anticipate your ways and will that's why we talk about writing down the vision the vision is your pattern the vision is your standard the vision is the blueprint we receive vision for a life designed yes by your divine architecture yes father we write down the vision we write down the vision what you have shown us is what we want to live by not what men suggest not the idea not the figment of human imagination come up high and let me show you what they showed him is what he wrote down <laughs> what they showed John at the place called yes Patmos where he was taken to heaven that was what he wrote down you can't write down what you have not seen that would be presumptive don't you think so how many things we are doing today we say God told us but you know God never told you that's something you saw you borrowed somewhere you you, you saw people doing you liked it it looks nice but is that what they told you is that what they showed you is that what they ask you to write down your life should be the expression of what heaven showed you it cannot be the opinions of others it cannot be what you see in others and you admire there's nothing wrong in admire what people do but don't copy them if the Lord had not told you your strength is in what they showed you your strength is in what they revealed to you your life is an outflow of what you have seen build according to the pattern shown you on the mountain if you have, if you have not learned to ascend of course you'll be borrowing pattern from Tom, Jick, and Harry. Only those who can ascend will have a revelation in this season. Oh, Father, sanctify us. Help us to be a company of men and women whose life has been rid of the leavens. Purge the old leaven. That they may be a, a new lumps. We bless you, Yahweh. Vision to pray. That's what we're asking for in this new day. Vision to pray. 
We want to pray because indeed you are the one who taught us how to pray. You say, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Our desire is to mirror heaven, not men. Our desire is to mirror heaven, not men, not something else. Our desire is to reveal, is to manifest, is to replicate heaven and earth. Come, come, come Lord. We get rid of every idol in our life. Everything contrary to your desire interest. We get rid of them. Nothing of the flesh will remain. Nothing of man. Nothing of Isaiah Phillips will remain. This is your house. This is your temple. This is the place of your dwelling. I don't have a choice. But to create for you a place. Where you can express yourself. God cannot use you. If your life is not yes conducive for his presence. We turn to you, Lord. We turn to you, Lord. We want to be used of you. That's why we turn to you. That's why we yield to you. We live our life in the way you desire it. We live our life in the way you, you, you long for. It's what you want that we give to you, not what we think. It's not what we assume. It's what you want that we give to you. You've got a standard, you've got a pattern. We yield to you this morning. Corporately as a church, as a nation, we say may your kingdom come. Come into this land, South Africa. Take your place, reign and rule over this place. Let your glory be manifest over this land. From the north to the south, from the east to the west. Let everyone know that indeed you are God and you have a plan for this nation. Let it be proclaimed, let it be known, let it be declared that you are God who reigns over this realm. Is our prayer. Jezebel will not control this land. Atalia will not control this land. We refuse a puppet king called Ahab. No, we declare it's you, Christ. We want to see reign. Rule and reign. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your will be done. Morning by morning, you awaken our ears to listen like one that is being taught. You teach us the ways of your kingdom. You show us the pattern, how to build Thank you, Father. Thank you for a company of priests. Thank you for a company of priests who have taken their rightful place. Our duty is to represent the bunch. We represent your purposes and desire and interest. Ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We consecrate ourselves. When the priests go into the temple on behalf of the nation, we must undress must wear the effort, must live a life that pleases the Lord. Yes. Yes, Father. It's our prayer this morning that we will wear the armor. Thank you, Lord, that we are well dressed, fully dressed. We advance as warriors. Warriors who are priests. Warriors who are priests. Warriors who are builders. Warriors who are technocrats. Warriors who are engineers. Oh, hallelujah. We engineer a new nation for you. We engineer a new society for you. We proclaim your kingdom come. We proclaim your will be established. Have your, have your way. Reign, Jesus. Your truth is what we see manifest. Thank you, Lamb of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. It's a day of glory. A day of glory requires a day of consecration. A day of glory requires a day of knowledge. A day of awareness. A day of light. A day of truth. A day of separation. 
Elijah was a man just like us. He understood what was at stake in his day. He prayed earnestly. Father, we engage you in the place of prayer. We engage you in the place of the watch. We are of them watching night and day, day and night. We pray, Spirit of the living God, have your way in our lives, in our homes, in our communities, in our family. Have your way. Thank you. Glamour Shanda Baye. Debalado Bahas. Come on, friends. Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this morning to pray. If you're able to make it, really appreciate it. And we're just having a bit of change of times. You know, wake up so early these days. The Lord kind of wants us to engage him in the place of prayer. But we believe, God, that we'll have a time again to be able to share the word in the morning. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. We'll see you again. Enjoy the rest of your morning. Bye-bye.